relationships between human and creature, man and beast. Now, does this remind you of a certain tale? Maybe a tale that is said to be as old as time. Ephesians 1 says that God predestined us to the adoption, uh, to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ. It also states that he chose us in him before the foundations of the world. That is also a story that, well not also, it is a story not as old as time, but even since eternity passed, that tale has always existed. Throughout all of time, if you can say there is time and eternity before even time was created, that tale was there for all time. Now, what story can you think of non non Bible that is a that is a tale between a beast and someone of the human race? Beauty and the beast. The tale as old as time, the beauty and the beast. How does that story relate to the gospel? How does it relate to your relationship with Christ? To your tale, your story? between Christ and you. I'll think back back into the story, the beauty and the beast, beauty's father, Bill, uh, yeah, the beauty's father, Maurice, goes to find a rose, he gets lost in the woods, he finds the castle, steals a rose, and gets cast into the dungeon by the beast, and Belle comes in to rescue her, her father, take his place he goes free but even before that if you remember there was a curse put on a, put on all the people and the prince because of the sin of the prince because and because of the sin of the prince all his people fell on their condemnation he was transformed to a beast the rest of them were transformed into furniture silverware etc and there was a curse and the only way that curse was going to be broken was if the beast could fall in love with a woman and the woman would return that love and they would be returned to their former state. So as the story about play out, Belle goes in there, she meets the beast. At first he's very, he's not just rowdy, he's not just rude, but he's very mean and aggressive. Has a very aggressive, very dominant personality. He has these spouts of anger. However, through love, she helps tame the beast. And as a result, she falls in love with him. And he, what you see at the very end, though, is when Gaston actually kills the beast. The beast dies. The last rose petal fell. Because when the rose petal fell, it, it's game over. And also, all the furniture people they died everyone passes away and so Bella sitting there crying over her dead beloved beast and but what happens life is spoken into existence by the power of the same one that cursed them the old hag which turned out to be an actual uh, person really reverse the curse and it was broken because finally love was put back into the life of the beast a relationship was finally formed and salvation was brought to not only the beast and not only the furniture people but also you see the whole castle itself transformed life is brought back into it there is a party at the end Gaston has been defeated. He was cat. He uh, fell into the canyon. Everyone, life is restored. It becomes a new creation in a way. The castle itself becomes new. People are resurrected back to their former selves. In the same way, 
The fall of man was the curse. In the same way that the old hag put the curse on the beast and the furniture people as a result of the sin of one man, so because of the sin in Adam, everyone fell into condemnation. God put a whole curse on all of creation. However, in order to reverse that curse, God sent his son Jesus to take the punishment for those who put their faith in him, would believe him, would trust him, and surrender their lives to him, and confess their sins, repent, and submit their lives to him. They would be saved. However, even though they become saved, even though they get into a relationship with Christ, who in this case is Bell, because it's symbology of that beauty, you are still a beast. You still have that beast traits. Whatever it may be. Maybe you're not on a maybe you don't wrestle with unrighteous aggression. Maybe you don't wrestle with frustration and unrighteous anger. Perhaps there are other things you wrestle with that still that, that are sin inside you. Now even though you're in a relationship with Christ, even though you have a relationship with Bell, in this case, you still have that beast with inside you. And Christ throughout your life works with you and you need to help soothe that beast inside to help soothe you so that you will give in into giving the fruits of the Spirit and not the fruits of unrighteousness. He will help you wrestle that sin down, but you will still always be that beast in this life. Though you are a new creation, though the old has passed away and the new has come, as 2 Corinthians 5.17, you still have that old flesh inside you. And it will not be until you, like the beast, also die. You will not reach that perfection as Christ is. However, that day is coming when, like what happened to the beast and the furniture people and everyone else, in the same way they came back to life and were, and were resurrected and were given their new bodies, so, which for them it was really old bodies, but you know, in this case, let's just say it's new. So you also will come back from the dead and will be given a new body. In the same way the castle was restored to its former self, so the earth, even though it will not be restored to its former self, it will be destroyed and a new heaven and a new earth will be formed. A new creation will occur. And it is then... You will no longer be a beast. Your sanctification will reach perfection. Because of you, because Christ, because you, the old self, will be completely gone. Even though the old self is dead, you will no longer 